Welcome to Let's Play Boulder's Gate Part 2. Now, um, if you notice anything is slightly different, I have new uh, recording software. And it had an option to record the sound from the speakers, aka record the sounds of the game. And it made it much more clear. However, when I did that, and record sounds from my microphone. It uh it ended up causing some audio issues where that same screechy noise from the first part of the let's play was far more prevalent. Um so if I only select the option to record from a microphone and then the sound quality turns out to be slightly better. That and I lowered my microphone boost. And when I did my test video, I made a whole bunch of S slurry sounding words. And it actually came out fairly clear and it was much less uh, staticky, I guess is the word. I'm not quite sure. Anyway, we're, it's, uh, we're gonna kick this off. Now, in the first part, Grian asked us to prepare ourselves by collecting some equipment from Winthrop at the Candlekeep Inn, and we're gonna do just that. We're a good person, we follow instructions, especially from our father figures. Clean as an elven ass, you say. And with the 5,000 gold piece book entrance fee. Um, I don't have that much money, Winthrop, I'm sorry. He calls us charming, and he fears we lack a sense of humor. That's too bad. Oh well. We're gonna rest for a day. Watch this cute little video where a rat scurries around from bed to bed. How neat. Um, and let's go buy a sling. There it is. And some bullets. Now, I apologize if my voice is far too quiet, but hopefully the the lack of sound audio errors is worth it. And hopefully the quality is slightly better, because I know if you boost your microphone too high, then sometimes the quality suffers as well. So now, a spell from Boulder's Gate 2 is fine familiar, and since this is in the Boulder's Gate 2 engine, all the spells have been updated to that engine. Um, so let's go ahead and cast that. Ta-da! We have our own little false dragon. He's adorable, isn't he? Now, for right now, we're going to put him in our pack. Come here, I want to pick you up and put you in my pack where it's a bit safer, little cutie. Its eyes brighten and it practically leaps into your arms, ready to be stowed amongst your belongings where it can sleep and occasionally poke its head out. How cute. Um, notice here we have a quick slot error. If we unequipped, reequipped, it fixes it and we get our second quick slot and our quarter staff on the quick slot. Let's go ahead and equip our sling and our stones. And there's our little familiar. If we right click it and look at its details, we see it has stats and we can actually use it in combat. Now in Boulder's Gate 2, uh, actually, first off, I don't believe it ever gets better than this. Maybe it gains hit points. Um, in, I don't actually know. In Boulder's Gate 2, I know you start out like around level 9. So I could imagine this not being very useful in combat. However, at level 1, an armor class of minus 2 is extremely high. Well, extremely good at level 1. Hit points of 12 is the maximum a fighter can start with. Um, no, it's not. It's the maximum a fighter can start with is 14, but it's it's a very high amount of hit points. Um, it's double what I start with. It also has 50% magic resist, which is amazing. It has two attacks per round at a Thaco of 13, which is far greater than you could have as any level one character. One to three damage is pretty low but you get two attacks so it's really two to six damage which is okay actually it's perfectly acceptable 
also it hits it hits uh better than any first level character and when it hits and it has two attacks they have a save against magic will be rendered unconscious for essentially forever in combat time um and it can cast blur on, i believe just on itself which will make it even harder to hit so for right now for my mage this is one hell of a tank and one hell of a uh, companion to have this actually makes mages extremely powerful in the first boulders gate early on when initially they were the weakest class um, now there are side quests during the prologue chapter I don't really think I need to do them. Um, I don't want to do them because I've done them, I don't know, like a thousand times before. Um, so let's just continue on. We're equipped, we're ready, and let's, let's rest again so we can get more spells. Sleep is the most powerful first level spell in D&D. Most powerful first level spell in D&D for the first, like, two, three levels. So we rested, we got our spells, and now we're going to go see Garion. It's late at night, but that doesn't actually really affect the story all too much. <sighs> Um, just as a side note, I recently found my Diablo 1 CD that I've kept in mint condition. Um, I've been kind of playing that for off and on for a while. And this is Emma Wynn, um, our childhood friend. Um, I'm sorry Emma Wynn, I can't tell anyone what I'm to be doing. To be doing. Derp. Um, if you say so, you sure picked up a lot from old Garion. He never tells us straight, neither. Good luck on your trip. Er, I mean, good luck with whatever you're doing. It's obvious she knows something. What do you know, Emmelyn? Oh, I know. Old stick in the mud that he is. Wait. Oh, I know. Old stick in the mud that he is. All worried about. It, it says his, not is. Odd. Okay, there's a typo for you. Whatever. All right, let's let's go, Garan. I'm ready. Biffy. Bum, 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 bum. Excellent. What? Oh shit. Why does he want me, Garion? Oh, crap. Fuck him up, Garion! Oh, God. Ow! We got hit! Take him out, Garion! Oh, he ran out of spells. Going toe to toe with the fighter. Not good! Indeed. Yep. For me. Hmm. 
What? Okay, okay, so Candlekeep won't let us in, even though we live there just like one night ago. What the fuck, Candlekeep? Um, <laughs> and the game, again, strongly encourages you to head over to the Friendly Arm Inn to meet Khalid and Jahira. And look, it's Emma Win. We We got that. Hey, yeah, uh, it's me, Emma Win. God damn, that's annoying. Anyway, um, she knew of our journey. How could you have known, Emma Win? Tell us, we've asked you before. She uh, accidentally read a letter on his desk the other day. Uh, anyway, she won't let a friend down, so she's going to stick with me until I say otherwise. And she joins the party. How nice. Um, let's see. Those are familiar. Let's go ahead and release him. Emmawen has three potions. We're going to give her one. A uh, oil of speed, doubles movement rate, and gives you one more attack per round, and a wand of magic missile with ten charges, I believe. Uh, these two potions we're going to give to ourselves. Also notice, now that we have a familiar, half its hit point total gets added to our hit point total. So essentially, we just gain six hit points for summoning this guy. And there he is. Another thing to note, if our false dragon dies, then we lose one point of constitution permanently, which sucks. Which is why after level 2 or 3, I'm just going to keep him in my pack from then on, because unless his hit points raise with ours, that I'm not sure about. Because um, if it does, he might be useful throughout most of Boulder's Gate. Perhaps not Tales of the Sword Coast, although I haven't played it. I don't know how tough the enemies are there. Um, but that save versus magic effect that he has on all his hits, quite good. Um, in our next video, I'm going to cover our passage towards the Friendly Arm Inn and other strange things that might happen along the way. Anyway, um, this has been Let's Play Boulder's Gate Part 2. Uh, thank you for watching, and later, folks.